Hello and welcome to the Masters Voice the podcast series on mediabrief.com. I'm your host and friend Pawan R Chawla and with me today in equally strong anticipation of cinema halls finally reopening across the entire state of Maharashtra is an industry leader and statesman for the theatrical cinema subsector of the massive entertainment industry in India. Alok Tandon, Chief Executive Officer, Inox Leisure Limited, is my expert guest on this episode of the Master's Voice on MediaBrief.com. Alok, welcome to the Master's Voice. Thanks a lot, Pavan, for having me on the show. Thank you so much for your presence and time, Alok, and it's a pleasure for me to equally. And thanks also to Puneet Gupta for having helped set this up. But before we get into the business end of our chat, Alok, let me first quickly do you the courtesy of introducing you to my listeners. There are always many youngsters too who should know. about my friend and expert alok tandon and what he has been bringing to the table so by your leave here goes alok tandon ceo of inox leisure limited has been instrumental in growing it into one of the largest and most significant multiplex chains of india as a member of the startup team of inox alok spearheaded the organization for two decades from scratch to a footprint of more than 650 screens across india Alok has helped Inox Leisure achieve strong market share with continued business growth. It was in 2001 that Alok joined Inox Leisure as Vice President Technical and from that time when the company was in startup mode till this day more than 2 decades after Alok has successfully steered the growth momentum and built the ethos of Inox around the three pillars of luxury, technology and service and strengthening its motto of live the movie. Alok was rated amongst the Business Today PwC list of India's top 100 CEOs in 2016. In 2018, Alok received the award for CEO of the year at the Economic Times Retail Excellence Awards and in June 2019 Business World put him in the coveted list of the 20 most valuable CEOs in India. As a torchbearer of the multiplex industry in the retail domain, Alok has consistently been recognized as a retail icon of India. For instance, India Retail Forum recognized Alok as the most admired retail personality of the year for FY19. Alok has over 3 decades of experience across the entertainment, hospitality and pharmaceutical industries and has been instrumental in setups and growth across genres. Alok is a speaker at various national and international conferences and symposiums and brings vast experience in strategy, growth and innovation. So that's about Alok Tandon, Chief Executive Officer, Inox Leisure Limited, my expert guest and friend on this episode of the Master's Voice on MediaBrief.com. Alok, welcome again. Thank you. Thanks, Pavan, for this grand and flattering introduction. All facts are perfect, and there was no flattery there. <laughs> Whatever I've tried to do is is be a part of the team over here at Inox with some amazing colleagues of mine. and ensure that uh, we really become torch bearers of the entire industry and as you rightly said that uh, work towards the three pillars which inox is built on which is luxury technology and service wonderful and you know i must tell my listeners that uh, our listeners that alok uh, you are someone i have known for quite some time now one of india's most respected professionals in the business building and deep seated long term growth and especially for of course the theatrical part of uh, business and m&d in india you've been amongst the industry leaders one can count on the fingers of one hand who today are custodians of not just their own mega chains in the theatrical business but of the entire industry and alok since you've been also part of the core leadership at the multiplex association of india which has been working assiduously over time to keep theaters in readiness and also for the general interest in and belief in the indisputable fact that cinemas are a great continuing source of family delight and revenues nearly as strong as they've ever been so with alok with you as my guest this episode will dwell upon the power of the incomparable passion genre of viewing experience that cinemas offer to individuals with their families and with their friends too and we'll also talk about the sad pause it has had and the great potential and future it so definitely has so alok let's get on with our conversation the terrible lockdown period and how it impacted the greatest most loved form of passion entertainment for families across india that is cinema hall movie watching we are now looking forward to the reopening of the movie halls across maharashtra state wide on 22nd of october but first a look the very brief top line of how the lockdown hit impacted theatrical businesses 
all the important pieces of the entire pie. If you can just summarize that so that we set the perspective here and then look ahead. Sure, absolutely, Pavan, and you rightly use the phrase "sad pause." So that was a really a sad pause in the hundred-year-old history of uh, cinemas across the world, right. where uh, the lights were just shut down from our screens, mm. and uh, across the globe, not even a single screen was operational for a certain period of time. So you're absolutely right that that was a sad pause, but I think that was just a blip, and we all will bounce back. Right. Well, let me tell you that COVID not only tested us and our resilience, but also the cinema exhibition industry as well as the entire film industry. If I talk about the Indian film industry, it's a 20,000 crore rupees strong industry, and in FY20, uh, there was there were hardly any revenues. The industry must have lost anything between about 10 to 15,000 crores, and that's a huge, huge number. So the entire revenues of a year were completely wiped out. But then let me also tell you that the stretch of 15 to 18 months has left us with a lot of lessons. Mm. Over and above the entire financial upheaval, which I just spoke about, we dealt with crisis management, stakeholder management, and most importantly, we ensured that our most valuable asset, uh, our people are well taken care of despite the adverse circumstances. Well, uh, the manner, I would say, in which we galvanized whatever resources we had at our disposal to ensure survival and sustainability has made us sharper and stronger. Excellent. Pavan, what I can say is that sharper and stronger Ionox will continue to delight our customers Mm. with its innovations and investors with the might of its strong balance sheet. So when you are talking about the top line, let me also tell you that Ionox as a chain has got a very, very strong balance sheet and that has sustained us through these difficult and uh, tumultuous uh, 18 months which we've all gone through. And now, yes, with this uh, light shining at the end of the tunnel of most of the states allowing us to reopen, Maharashtra allowing us to open from 22nd of October and Kerala from 25th of October, Hmm. I think that all our screens will be lit up now and uh, whatever we have gone through will be a thing of the past. Amen to that. Most strength to you, Alok, and in fact, to every single and multiplex chain and theater owner across the country. Thank you. On the 22nd of uh, October, all the theaters across Maharashtra are opening up. So, how many cinemas and seats across the entire state? Any guesstimate or estimate or number? And also, how many from Inox, Maharashtra wide? And if you want to add it, Kerala wide. Well, we have uh, in totality 658 screens as we speak across 156 properties and we nearly have 150,000 screens. And uh, Pavan, 20% of our screens and 20% of our seats Hmm. are in Maharashtra. So that's a large number. And even if I look at the Hindi film industry, Hmm. uh, a lot of revenue comes from Maharashtra. So uh, once Maharashtra is allowed to open, we will see that Uh, Lots of movies will hit the screens Mm. and as we all know that within 24 hours of the government of Maharashtra allowing us to reopen, Mm. there were more than 20 films which were announced. Right, right. And that's a big, big day. Mm. I think it was 26th of September when the government allowed us to or said that we can open from 22nd October Mm. and there were more than 20 films which were announced in a short gap of 24 hours. So that's the power of Maharashtra where Hindi film industry is concerned. Kerala, yes, we have a presence over there. We have got a screen in uh, Thrissur. We have got a multiplex over there. And again, that's also a very strong industry. And we all are waiting for Kerala and Maharashtra to open. Excellent. Fingers crossed that there should be no fresh outbreak anywhere and everything should sail smoothly. So, um, Alok, we've seen the SOPs you know, that the Maharashtra government announced, notified. Yeah. Just want your view on them, your view on them. Any SOPs you wish could have been slightly different or only one day a week of physical opening was allowed in the past for maintenance. Would that be enough for theatres to be in full readiness uh, on the 22nd of October? You know, generally, what's your view? Well, well, we welcome the SOPs, Pavan. Uh, I think what the government is doing is taking care of the of all the citizens of the state. And whatever uh, they have mentioned, we welcome it. Our request to the state government was that please allow the guests to take in food inside the auditorium. 
but in their wisdom they said that uh, uh, the guests are allowed to consume food in the lobbies but not take it inside mm. and uh, that's the decision which they have taken and we will follow it uh, as we did it after the first lockdown when it was reopened mm. but otherwise i think it's in line with what other states have told us to do and also what we did uh, after the first lockdown reopened mm. so whether it is having staggering shows whether it's ensuring that the interval the start of a movie and the end do not clash to have uh, social distancing to have every alternate seat allowed for a patron to sit on so all those things uh, i think that we are used to those sops mm. and they are simple to follow and also the advantage is that i guess know today that what they expect out of a cinema hall when they come to watch a movie right i think all our consumers and customers are aware of and having said this my job as the person who's leading inox is to ensure that all our guests have a safe experience in us in mahol mm. and as we did after the first lockdown we went back their confidence and they come back to watch movies mm. in a throng and all our lobbies go back to the hustle and bustle that they were known for prior to covid absolutely so you know today we are ready and waiting to swing open the gates and doors to theater properties and halls yeah so what is the additional cost burden as an average percentage per theater to ensure the sops are in place well i would say that the additional cost burden is only on the uh, the housekeeping material which is used to sanitize the auditoriums mm. uh, because all other things we were doing earlier also whether it was exhausting air pumping in fresh air uh, uh ensuring that our toilets are neat and clean mm. so that's no cost at all that was like uh, the if i could use the word that was hygiene for us right but yes we have spent a little of uh, i can't actually tell you the numbers but a decent amount of money to ensure that our guests are comfortable with us that we uh, clean the auditoriums before every show that we sanitize them we defog them and at night we do deep cleaning of all our seats and any other hot surface for example the concession counters mm. uh, or the doors the door handles mm. uh, which are guests touch or come in close contact with mm. so that's one thing power which we are spending on but at the moment of time and even after the first lockdown i would say it was not an expense for us what we said is this is something which you are doing so that uh, i'm using the word again comfortable that people feel comfortable with us mm. and they come and watch movies because this is something which they have been denied for the last 18 months and people are dying to come out and watch a movie on a large screen with uh, clear projection and compressed sound and that's something which we want to offer them uh, where they just come and relax and uh, have a great time wonderful and of course i mean i am not going there and neither will you want to right now at the opportunity cost which is in the interest of safety as mandated only 50% occupancy yeah. so that hopefully will sort of get better and you know once the lockdown wanes and things are back to 100% capacity yes absolutely some states have already allowed us to operate with 100% capacity mm. some have not we have requested the various state governments who have not allowed to allowed us to operate at 100% capacity is please do so and uh, i think sooner or later that uh, circular will come where we are allowed to operate at 100% and it's a great phasing in also and i hope that the 100% uh, circular comes out very very shortly because you've already proven yourselves with your readiness so what do you expect as short term results of this reopening after so long you know the movies lineups etc how will the reopening of cinemas surely help as i believe it will the sub sector of mnd bounce back strongly led by theatrical well uh, i think that the release dates of more than 20 movies which have been announced within a period of 24 hours just shows that how strong the entire theatrical part is in the entire film industry mm. and how the cinema makers or the content creators look at uh, exhibition so that's one uh, number two i would say that with movies which are being released now with suravanshi already announced 83 coming in antem banti or bubbly mm. the list is endless and we'll have really blockbuster weekends and also coupled with that is the festive season diwali christmas uh, then new years so this historically has been a great quarter for movie releases and footfalls mm. and this time also with 
people just staying at home for so many months and the festive season which is we are in the middle of the festive season now and navratri is just getting over so people will come out and and uh, see remember one more thing that earlier after the first lockdown there were high apprehensions there was low content and there was nothing called vaccination hmm. today it's all changed it's the reverse now people are less apprehensive right. the content is there and also vaccination is in full swing right. so people will surely come out and it's a matter of time before things get back to normal bubble absolutely amen to that too alok during the lockdown you know what campaigns and marketing initiatives did inox do undertake with you know meaningful initiatives to stay in the conversations during the lockdown you all supported sports icons and personalities and a lot of stuff that you all did yeah. and honestly it was more about uh, brand purpose than you know tactical property selling which anyways was closed so i liked your approach but you want to just speak about any specific campaigns that were closer to your heart and which helped inox well we kept on talking to our guests we kept on engaging with them whether it was our guests our stakeholders our developers our producer friends mm. so something which we kept on doing and that power from march last year when we were allowed to or we were ordered to shut down mm. we kept on communicating with them yes uh, we did a lot of i would say activities on our social media pages be it instagram facebook twitter mm. we had some quizzes we had a lot of engagement activities we remained transparent if i can use that word that where we are and how strong our balance sheet is that's the the harder aspect but the softer aspect also uh, we promoted a lot of i would say content in our theaters mm. uh, when we were allowed to open and there was no content called alternate content so that's something which we kept on doing mm. we did a lot of i would say non cinema related events in our theaters when we were allowed to open mm. we spoke with our guests about safety about our commitment to their well being uh, we communicated with them on a regular basis and you talked about sports yes uh, the indian olympic team we sponsored that mm. and also uh, in pre covid days uh, inox has been very particular about promoting sports so whether it was showing the icc world cup matches which took place in england uh, about 2 years back we did that we have had uh, a lot of other programs on our screen for example if i remember right the screening of uh, bts that music k pop band of korea showing that on our screens uh, using our theaters for one act plays using our theaters for musical conferences so this is something pavan which we have kept on doing and we'll keep on doing but one thing which came as i would say a feedback from guests and we really lapped it up after the first lockdown is to have private screening oh yes so uh, what happened was that we sold our auditoriums to let's say family and friends and they came and watched a movie of their choice at the time of their choice and and had a great time with us and we curated the food menu as per their requirement so these things we keep on doing and uh, going forward also i'm very sure that once there is nothing as covid and we all go back to get back to normal uh, we'll go back to schools where we which we used to do a lot uh, pre covid is uh, tell school children to come to us and see the documentaries that we have from natrio from discovery okay and and uh, so that's something which we were good at hmm. and that will continue happening once things get back to normal and children go back to schools excellent excellent let's change shift gears and uh, go to something which is more about the industry all right yeah what do you believe alok uh, and it's been a contentious issue i mean it isn't as if people have been up in arms but people have been talking about and stating their side of uh, you know the argument or the statement iteration what do you believe alok should be the exclusive window for any film's theatrical release before it is given to television and ott well historically pavan there has always been a time lag or as we call it in film parlance a windowing period mm. movie comes on an ott platform after hitting the silver screen so the reason for that is that mm. see the amount of footfalls or the money it generates at the box office mm. 
number one gives the producer a lot of i would say ammunition and power mm. uh, to to negotiate deals with other people with other platforms mm. and uh, it's a direct correlation with the performance of a movie in a theater mm. the collections uh, in the box office compared to what he or she can garner from other platforms so that's one okay a uh, number two also uh, i think that it's very important for the window to take place because then as i said that the producer can monetize every vertical stream of the various uh, platforms are there mm. and it's always nice to see fresh content on a large screen mm. and today whether it's india or any part of the globe mm. why do we go to theaters uh, number one is to see our heroes on the giant screen right not to see them on our mobile 6 inch screens or on the televisions that we have at home we want to see our actors uh, who have a larger than life persona in front of us uh, we want to watch them on the big screen uh, we want to watch a movie with uncompressed sound we want to watch a movie in a great ambience uh, with great production so for us it's an outing watching a movie i would say for us indians has been in our dna is in our dna and will continue to be in our dna mm. uh wo jo hum bolte hain that we love our food and we love our movies and we love to watch our cricket that isn't going anywhere right so that will stay with us so i would say that uh the theatrical window is important it is important for people to come on the large screen mm. and all this talk which is happening and i know that Uh, you're just talking about the benefits of that, but whether OTT will survive or whether cinema will survive, I think it's dead. Because what we consume, uh, Pawan, uh, on an OTT is totally different from what we consume in a cinema hall. Uh, and this I have said earlier also that content like docu dramas, documentaries, web series, and old movie which we have missed in the theater, we catch up on streaming platforms. where cinemas are still a preferred way to enjoy fresh new movies and that's the reason why both of them will coexist in our country i would say that both modes of entertainment are identified by a distinct consumption pattern and behavior to an extent largely due to the technology involved so that's how i look at it uh, i think that both cinemas and ott will coexist and historically there has been a windowing time between movies hitting a theater and coming on OTT platform and that will continue to happen oh absolutely and what should it be in today's day and age well uh, as an exhibit i can say longer the better but we in india have said it should be 8 weeks because uh, i think 8 weeks is a decent enough time mm. for the movie to perform well at the box office and also for the distributor to to have his deals and uh, talk to his other partners for various platforms and not only does it support the passion entertainment that individuals and families and friends are so keen on you know in terms of watching a movie in a theater or a cinema hall but it also is essential for this massive brick and mortar setup which has been created with blood sweat and billions of rupees over so many decades so very very important right so for films released first or only on ott and then television you already told me that the opportunity cost would have been in terms of the producer getting to sort of arrive at the perfect amount of money that the potential of his film you know as demonstrated by the revenues at the box office but some free films were released on ott platforms and they claimed that they did business that would have been equal to 100 or 200 crores during the lockdown and one such film i recall was actually offered free so that wasn't an apples to apples comparison at all because indians are still loth to pay too much on ott and what's happening is that uh, you know even today after so many years of so many good excellent ott platforms in india there aren't more than maybe a guesstimated 60 to 70 million paying subscribers across the country across all those platforms definitely i think uh, what you just said i added this for my own perspective and i believe that cinema is going to remain there cinema experience cannot be replaced with any other thing it just cannot it just cannot absolutely one related question you know often and i saw this recently and there was also the association perhaps if i'm not mistaken wrote to that particular producer who had kept different window sizes in terms of weeks for different language or dubbed versions of the same film 
how does having these different windows impact cinema halls well i think window should be large it should be that people visit the cinema halls first because you get a lot of collection from the box office mm. now why producer did that it's for him to only answer but yes again i'm repeating as a cinema operator as a cinema exhibitor we would love producers to have a longer windowing time so that we can extract maximum uh, from the box office uh, we all know that the beauty of the multiplexes is that once the content is fresh hmm. uh, we have more shows of it uh, we get more screens so uh, the movies are start after every 40 to 45 minutes uh, in a particular multiplex and that when it comes in the second or third week uh, it it naturally the shows reduce but there are times when uh, the movie comes on ott and uh, the producer could have shown the movie for a longer period of cinemas because the movie was still collecting uh, good collections but as i said that's the that's 100% the prerogative of the content creator sure uh, though as exhibitors we would love to have a longer windowing pattern and movies to run for a longer period in cinema halls is it a level playing field that uh, you know a film doesn't need any censorship certificate on ott i i don't favor censorship at all i wish what happens with ott could happen on theater also but uh, ultimately there are two different uh, playing fields should the fields be leveled and how well well uh, uh, for the content i would say that the government can answer that question and uh, for me i would say that we would like to show content on our screens uh, whether it's uh, well i can't call it uncensored content because we are not allowed to show uncensored everything which we show on our screens has to have a censor certificate mm. and we will honor pavan whatever the government tells us right. see remember that's the point which the content creators have to talk to with the government mm. whether they should be censorship whether they should be certification only whatever it is mm. for us as an operator we will show what the government tells us okay so for us not a problem at all mm. today india releases about 1800 unique titles across all genres across all languages mm. and we at anox in fy20 release around 1100 titles unique titles wow. so the content is there the way the movies are made today is really different from what it was earlier mm. uh, things are improving the storytelling has changed Uh, the way a story is told the way the movie is shot the way the cinematography is done mm. is totally different from what it was earlier mm. so for us uh, we are happy to show content on the screen and uh, if the government says it has to be censored so be it we will honor it okay and um, whichever state allows uh, reopening of cinema halls across will inox be going ahead and reopening every single screen that it has in that state or i mean is going to be phased out some may be under construction repair this that and the other so how do you view this are you ready to throw all the doors open we have already thrown all our doors open okay uh, wherever the state governments have allowed us to reopen we have done it except one property which is under renovation okay otherwise else uh, all our screens today are operational so with the governments have allowed us to open that's great okay and as an industry thought leader and a statesman who's worked also as a custodian for the rest of the entire uh, subsector of theatrical what are the other areas of importance where the cinema theatrical business does need industry or i would say government uh, support well let me tell you that we made a few representations during the lockdown mm-hmm. whether it was the first lockdown or the second one mm. and uh, we made these representations to the government under uh, the aegis of the multiplex association of india right where we requested our the governments to support us in the form of salary subsidies the mm. uh, interest free loans for 3 years okay exemption from various taxes and duties like gst show tax lbet property tax so all those things and also a waiver of electricity minimum demand charges okay so those were the few things we spoke with the governments about we wrote letters to them we made various representations mm. and and let me tell you that a few states have accepted those okay and not in totality but yes we are quite happy that they came forward to help the industry and the other main thing which pavan we want from various state governments is that all our cinema licenses uh, should be extended for 
at least a year or two. Correct. Not that you don't come and audit us. Please come and audit us. Please come and check whether we are fire compliant or not. Please come and check whether uh, our our safety standards are being met or not. But uh, at the same time, ensure that uh, the licenses which we have, which are given on yearly basis, are extended. That really is the barest minimum that the government and uh, the state government should really do. So, Alok Cinemas and of course all the Inox units too are completely prepped up for the return of safe and enjoyable cinema experiences and millions will flock to them. Most strength to you Alok and your team and the association that you've been one of the leaders of that has helped helm the return to hopefully full normality and functioning at theatres nationwide. Thank you. So, I really enjoyed our conversation Alok. Uh, I hope you did too. Any thoughts on that? No, just to tell you that you said that we are completely prepped up, which is absolutely right. We are completely geared up to welcome back the movie lovers at Inox. And again, our key focus, I'm repeating again, but that's very important, is we'll continue to stay on safety and hygiene. And uh, food is something which uh, I would say that in Inox, we are working a lot towards. Uh, We want our guests to eat food with the movie rather than before and after the movie and have it with us. So uh, whether it's tying up with master chefs who have curated our menu or uh, having live kitchens in a few of our properties, having about 12 different cuisines with 250 items on the menu in our megaplexes, we are doing doing a lot of where food is concerned. Mm. And recently uh, we've tied up with ITC. We will serve food in our cinema halls. Plus also Mm. take the cinema food of Inox to your houses, to your living rooms. So today, Inox delivers food on Swiggy, Zomato. Uh, we've tied up with Easy Diner uh, so that you can book, if I can use a word, a table inside our cinema halls and eat food. Wow. So we are doing a lot where food is concerned, Pavan. And that's the focus area for all of us at Inox these days. Excellent. And uh, I would say that the teams are totally ready to welcome back people. And uh, we have learned a lot after the first lockdown. And we can say that the situation will only improve now. Wonderful. Godspeed and God bless there, Alok. Lot of wonderful insights there from all the amazing experience you bring to the table and your leadership of Inox, the entire chain and your custodianship, if I may use that word, not yours, but I will use that of the association that is actually empowering and helping the cinema industry rebound and get back on the growth curve. So. A lot of insights from the conversation and all your experience. Thank you very much indeed, Alok. I enjoyed uh, my conversation with you. Any thoughts on the chat we've had so far? Well, I enjoyed too, Pavan. And uh, I think this platform of yours is great for everyone uh, in the industry, the marketing people, the the entire, I would say, fraternity uh, of media, of advertising. Uh, I think it's a fantastic platform and the way you are taking it forward and coming up with podcasts and articles, I would say more power and more strength to you. Thank you so much. You're very kind, Alok. Alok Tandon, Chief Executive Officer, Inox Leisure Limited was my distinguished guest on this episode of the Master's Voice on MediaBrief.com. Thanks, Alok, uh, for all the time and thank you, Puneet Gupta, also for making this possible. Till we meet again in the next episode of the Master's Voice on MediaBrief.com. This is your host and friend Pavan R. Chawla saying, stay safe, take care, oh yeah, and take your family to the movie halls starting the 22nd of October in Maharashtra for a great time. And let's hope that the good times come back on a huge roll with cinema and theatre chains and single screen theatres opening across various states. Till we meet again, take care, have a great time, but stay safe. Bye-bye.